Hello, I'm Pat O'Hare, Chief Market Analyst for Briefing.com. Today is Wednesday, July 23rd. Wednesday marked an active session for Wall Street with 110 companies releasing their quarterly results, including four Dow components. In addition, the government announced its weekly energy statistics and the Fed released its beige book. The stock market settled with a modest gain of 0.4% in volatile and heavy trade. The advance was aided by a steep drop in crude prices and several better than expected earnings reports. The NASDAQ outperformed its counterparts thanks to strength in large cap technology names. Defensive investments such as the utility sector underperformed, while beaten down areas saw a surge in buying interest as investors showed more willingness to take on risk. Consumer discretionary stocks rose 2%, with home builders climbing 4%. Automakers rose 3% after General Motors forecast a 2.5% increase in global 2008 auto sales as strong emerging market demand offsets weakness in North America. Meanwhile, retailers advanced 2.4% after crude prices took a tumble. Oil prices fell 3.1% to 124.48 per barrel, marking their lowest level in more than six weeks. Crude inventory levels fell by a larger than expected amount, but an increase in gasoline stockpiles raised concerns about demand destruction. The drop in oil prices weighed heavily on the energy sector, which fell 3.8%, but provided a huge lift to the airline stocks, which rallied 8.5%. Commodities as a whole fell 1.7%, with gold shedding 3.1%, and the dollar rising 0.5%. As a result, the material sector, down 1.7%, underperformed. The financial sector was once again in focus after Washington Mutual reported a larger-than-expected second-quarter loss of $3.3 billion. The sector managed to gain as much as 4.6% on news that lawmakers reached a deal on a housing bill that, among other things, will allow for financial aid to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac if need be. Financials slipped off their best levels to settle the day with a gain of 1.9% after Washington Mutual reversed into the red on concerns that it will have to raise more capital. The financial sector is now up 34% since July 15th, yet it's still down 23% for the year. Earnings results were mostly better than expected. Anheuser-Busch, ConocoPhillips, Exelon, General Dynamics, Norfolk Southern, McDonald's, PepsiCo, Pfizer, WellPoint, and Wyeth all reported earnings that topped Wall Street forecasts and increased earnings per share versus the prior year. AT&T rallied after reporting an 8.6% rise in earnings per share, which met Wall Street's forecast. There were some earnings misses. Boeing, E-Trade, Washington Mutual, and Yahoo all fell short of estimates. Meanwhile, Costco warned that its earnings per share for its fourth quarter ending in August will fall well below the current consensus estimate of a dollar. Costco cited increased inflation, especially energy costs, and a larger than expected LIFO accounting charge for the shortfall. Walmart, operator of Sam's Club, fell in conjunction with Costco. The Fed's Beige Book, which is a collection of anecdotal economic information, prompted a brief drop in stocks, yet the market quickly recovered from the knee-jerk reaction, as much of the information was already known. The report stated that the economy has slowed somewhat since the previous report and that there were increased price pressures. In addition, consumer spending was mixed, weak, or slowing in nearly all Fed districts. I'm Pat O'Hare for Briefing.com. Thanks for listening and have a good evening.